In this video, we're gonna talk about blind tasting wine, what it is, why you'd wanna do it, and how to use tips I've learned as a sommelier to become a pro. Blind tasting. It's seemingly the coolest part of becoming a sommelier. You get nothing but a glass of wine in front of you with no other information and somehow can magically figure out what it is, where it's from, how old, what grape, and even who makes it. If you watched the Psalm film, a disproportionate amount of time was spent in the film focusing on this part of the sommelier exam. And I get it. It's flashy. It's almost kind of like a game or party trick. I mean, who wouldn't want this killer talent to be able to bust out at your next family gathering or to impress that cute girl from the office? By the way, if you really want to impress the cute girl from the office, do me a favor and give me a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I heard chicks love that. What is blind tasting? First off, it's a little different than just tasting wine normally. In a normal wine tasting, you already know a bunch of information about the wine because it's on the bottle, where it's from, alcohol content, grape, price, etc. And all you're doing is assessing it, its flavors, quality, its structure, how much you enjoy it. I actually made a video on how to taste wine that you definitely want to check out before you watch this video because we're going to build off some of those topics because blind tasting is the next level to this. It's about taking all that information from regular tastings and applying it to a wine you know nothing about, one where you didn't get to see the label. It's about challenging ourselves, our knowledge, and our palate training to see if we can arrive at the correct answer. But what is blind tasting really for? Why do it at all? A few reasons. Number one, you need to do it if you wanna pass a sommelier exam, and it's also used as a training exercise as you study. Blind tasting is one of the three parts of the sommelier exam you need to pass, along with the written portion and the theory portion. By the way, to learn more about the sommelier exam, check out my How to Become a Somme video I made a while back, here or in the description. The reason it's included in the exam, though, is because it combines your wine theory with palate training. You need a solid foundation of both to blind taste successfully. Palate training means training yourself to identify the visuals of the wine, flavors, textures, structure, and aromas. And side note, anybody can do this. Some people say, I don't have a good palate. And while it's true some people are naturally better at this, just because I don't have the innate talent of Tiger Woods doesn't mean I can't practice golf and get good enough to keep it on the fairway. The point of palate training is to do enough repetition to identify patterns and become familiar with the tasting process. Number three is to test your wine theory knowledge. So let's say I'm a really good taster and I'm able to identify that a wine has high acid with strawberry character, low tannin, and pale red color. Great, but how does that help me if I don't know what grapes and what part of the world produces wines with those characteristics? So that's where the theory knowledge comes in. When you combine the two, you can successfully blind taste. Number four, it helps you become a better taster in general and gives you a methodology to follow for tasting. A lot of the principles you learn when blind tasting can be applied when you taste casually and help you get more out of your wines. And five, it's just fun. As I mentioned up top, it's kind of like a game or a sport and the better you get, the more fun it is. Whether you're training for an exam or simply have friends who are just into wine, it's a great group activity. Have everyone bring a wine in a brown paper bag and take turns blinding the group. Let's talk about the goals of blind tasting, and for my purposes, I'm going to go with the goals provided by the Court of Master Sommeliers, but WSET and other organizations have similar goals. By the end of the blind tasting, we're hoping to assess four things about the wine. Number one, where it's from. Number two, what is the grape or blend? Number three, its quality level. And number four, its vintage. Now in the test, and just generally in life, you don't have to get the answer exactly right, it's kind of like showing your work on a math problem. You get points for arriving at a logical conclusion, even if it's not the right one. Obviously, we want to be as close as we can, but if I call something Napa Cabernet, but it's actually Washington Merlot, I'd still likely pass, as those wines have a lot of similar characteristics. They both have medium-ish tannin, similar fruit character, both New World wines, etc. All that being said, let's talk about how to blind taste. Before we get started on the how-to portion of this, I wanna chat with you briefly about our Vino VIP Club. This is our membership club that gives early access to all our videos, including our full episodes and the YouTube videos, monthly raffles and giveaways, virtual Zoom hangouts with me, access to our members-only Facebook group, 
and a bunch more. It also really helps support us because we're independently produced. And plus, your first month is free, so nothing to lose. So if you have a moment, do me a favor, click the link above or in the description to sign up. Okay, so now let's get into how to blind taste. The Quartermasters actually has what they call a deductive tasting grid that is great to follow as your first learning, so I'll put that link in the description. Using this grid is also a lot of what I went over in that how to taste video I spoke about earlier, which is in the description as well, so watch that to learn how to fill this out. So let's pretend I already filled out most of this info about this wine, and I'm ready to try and guess what it is. The next step is to figure out how these elements on the grid answer our four goals of place, grape, quality, and age. While we do this, keep in mind we always want to eliminate options when we can. It's kind of like a game of Clue. Let's pretend this is our wine. It's red, which means you can already eliminate 60% of wines on the planet. White wines, rosé, sparkling, and orange wines all off the table. So you're doing great. And you keep doing this until there's only a few options left. Goal number one, place. We're gonna start broad and then we're gonna eliminate options. First question, is this from a new world country or an old world country? Old world wines, AKA Europe, tend to be more earth driven or mineral driven, while new world countries, basically anything outside of Europe, often produce wines that taste more like fruit. If you need other clues, old world wines are usually, and the keyword is usually because it's not always the case, but they're usually lower in alcohol and higher in acid for their respective grape and usually have less oak character. So consult your grid and ask yourself, does this wine taste more rustic and earthy, like an old world wine, or fruity and rich, like a new world wine? And let's say we think it's old world, which is awesome because we've eliminated another half of the world's wines. Next, is it from a cool climate or warm climate? Cool climate wines have higher acid, lighter body, and less alcohol, while warm climate wines are the opposite. Let's say we think it's cool climate. So now we think it's an old world cool climate wine. Remember that, because we're gonna come back to place after we chat a bit about the grape. Goal number two is the grape or blend. This is where you need to know some theory about your grapes. For instance, that Pinot Noir has red fruits and low tannin, while Cabernet Sauvignon has black fruits and high tannin. We actually have a playlist on our channel that details a lot of grape characteristics, so check that out. Otherwise, Wine Folly is a great resource for this as well. As we assess, I think getting too specific with tasting notes here can actually trip you up. I don't really care if you get old potting soil, cherry pie, and dried clove. Think more broad principles. Is the wine's fruit character red, blue, or black? Or for whites, citrus, stone fruit, or tropical? Do they use oak? What is the structure? Tannin, acid, and body for reds, and for whites, sugar, acid, and body. With these three things, fruit character, oak presence, and structure, you should be able to get a good sense of the grape. Here's a list of the grapes they use for the certified sommelier exam. If it's red fruits, limited oak, high acid, and light tannin and body, it's likely Pinot Noir or Gamay. The exact same thing, but medium tannin and body, Sangiovese. With purple fruits, Syrah or maybe Cabernet Franc. Even if you're torn on some elements, go with what you're sure of. If you're having trouble with the fruit character, but you're positive the tannin isn't high and there isn't oak, you can eliminate high tannin grapes like Nebbiolo or Cabernet Sauvignon or heavily oaked wines like Tempranillo. And on and on until you hone it in on the one or two grapes that it could be. One side note. While I did say don't worry too much about specific tasting notes, there is one caveat. Sometimes grapes have dead giveaways that you should look out for. Syrah and black pepper, Gruner and white pepper, Chardonnay and butter notes from malolactic fermentation, Cabernet Franc and bell pepper, Albarino and salinity, Riesling and petrol, etc. So make sure to learn these to make your life a lot easier. Now back to our first goal, place. Let's say we think it's Pinot Noir or it's Gamay. And we already said it was old world and cool climate. Here's where your theory comes in again. You need to know which regions in the world are old world, cool climate, and make Pinot Noir or Gamay. And there's really only one answer here that checks all the boxes. It's Burgundy. And so we've got our place. Now, is it Pinot Noir or is it Gamay? Is it bubblegum and banana-esque from carbonic maceration, which is a Gamay hallmark? No? Well, then it's got to be Pinot Noir. So there we have it. We eliminated our other options and we're left with Pinot Noir from Burgundy. 
Yay! Hang on, hang on. We're not quite there yet. Goal number three, quality. Two things to ask yourself with quality. Is this wine complex? And how long is the finish? Then decide if it's low, medium, or high quality. If your region has a quality hierarchy, assign it to one. Burgundy, for instance, has regional, village, premier cru, and grand cru, so pick one of those based on your assessment. Let's say it's the village level. And goal number four, vintage. Unless you really know vintages in your region of choice, an approximate age will suffice. One to five years, six to 10 years, or 10 years plus. There are good clues to help us determine age, and you should watch my video about aged wines to learn more. But quickly, are there signs of oxygen from either oak aging or time in the bottle? Things like color. Is the wine showing brown hues for reds or copper hues for whites? Is there rim variation? On the palate, have tertiary flavors like dried fruit and earthy flavors started to take over? Has the acid and tannin started to fade? Use this info and make your best guess. I'll say it's a young wine at one to five years old. And there it is, you've blind tasted a wine. In our hypothetical example, we'd say it was Pinot Noir from Burgundy, Village level, and one to five years old. All that's left is to reveal the bottle and see if you were right. But even if you weren't, you had fun, didn't you? In all seriousness, see what you got wrong and why, and take that knowledge to your next tasting. For my next video, which I'm gonna put here as soon as it's out next week, I'm gonna blind taste two wines using this method so you guys have an example to go by. I know this was a bit of an advanced topic, but I hope this video helps you learn a bit about blind tasting. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and please consider joining Vino VIP. And if you haven't seen our full travel episodes, that's our main content. So head to our page to watch. Cheers guys, until next wine.